Well, at QCRC, we felt it was really important to make space for us to have a deep conversation about what the March for Justice groundswell might mean for the music industry. I think we've all watched on and seen that these issues have been raised in relation to the Australian Parliament, but recognise that if we look in our own backyard and in our own industry, it's rife. It's an issue that can be found in every corner. And I think the music industry because of the way it's structured and there's so much precarious portfolio work that makes musicians particularly vulnerable for this sort of inappropriate gender-based behaviour to occur. There isn't the same kind of regulation that there might be in other fields and so this makes musicians particularly vulnerable. Our students are entering this industry and going to be vulnerable to these issues and so we felt it was really important to have a conversation with our students present to begin unpacking what the sorts of implications of this groundswell might mean for the industry more broadly. Not only to focus on sexual harassment and sexual assault but thinking in much more systemic ways about the bigger issues relating to inequality, injustice based. On gender. It's, it's an industry that has asymmetric power relationships built into it, so we need particular attention to the creative arts, I think, in that respect. So a source of, a source of great pride and, and identification and rights producing feelings, but also a place where there can be deep rights violations. It's a really interesting way to think about the music industry. Hopefully an awakening and hopefully a call to action and what I mean by that is, I think we've all got personal stories. I went through um, my institution, I was age 20 when I was first exposed to sexual harassment. And I've had many kind of colleagues who've been really affected with personal stories about what can happen within an institution. Um, but I was at an institution when in actual fact, four members of staff were actually um, put in jail because of actually what was going on. So it was a huge investigation for two years while I was at the Royal Northern College of Music. And it really stuck with me because I hadn't realised how um, endemic it can be. Um, but I think it can be endemic in any system. So I think what I learned from that is it's very important to call out behaviour of inequality wherever you see it. But I think the same even with race. You know, so I think there's so many things we can do. So I think um, this is part of a bigger picture for me, which is actually a call to justice and equality for humanity, really. I guess it's just another really important reminder that this, the harassment and lack of equality that can go on in the music industry is still very rampant and still needs to be addressed and it seems like we need these things to come up for people to remember um, whereas when you actually are in the industry and you're seeing it happening to people and peers and um, you don't really forget so I think it's a reminder to listen to many many voices that have been screaming for many many years um, and to actually take note of what those voices have been saying. Um, so it's not so much a brand new platform of amazing new awareness, it's actually just a collective reminder that we need to take action. And the way in which the female body, the performing female body, the music making body, the, the gendered body is being sexualized, is being uh, objectified and therefore, you know, made to feel very conscious when they're doing their work is actually appalling. Because what I'd like to do as a female performer is to be able to go there and perform and feel well doing that. I think in any industry there is a problem about silencing voices and that's also silencing critique. So one of the ways forward is to actually acknowledge, sort of repatriate problems and then re-engage with the future. Um, so much like, dare I say it, colonisation in this country, it's really hard to bandage problems when you don't actually elementally acknowledge what's happened in the past. 
And I think we're all, and I include myself, complicit in silencing um, areas of problems. We tend to sweep things under the carpet. We tend to make the world look rosier to our students. Um, and we do that for, from a very, very good perspective, but it's not actually elementally helpful to, um, to furthering equality and power balances and the ability for each individual to reach their potential, no matter what that potential might be. I think that's right. I think the creative industries always produce a power, powerful counter narrative to whatever narrative the most powerful are telling us. Um, and the government knows that. So the cuts to the university and the creative arts go beyond just the impact on those people's lives. They go to our the cultural web and weave of our society. Um, so it is really, really disappointing to see that at the time that we needed, we needed creative arts the most, they were not, they were disrespected by our government. And I feel like um, that's something all of us need to take on board. I think the politics of listening is a really interesting concept for us to think about in the music industry because we've seen a lot of voicing of testimonials but you have to wonder where do they go? Do they fall on deaf or as we've heard tone deaf ears? Do they fly into the ether? I think as, a, as an industry we are focused in the business of listening. We need to think about how we can actively and deeply listen and then respond. I think any educational institution is elemental in that but it's also complicit in that to this point so um, it's a really complex thing. Um, you almost have to deconstruct the institution to reconstruct another way of looking um, and I think the problem is many people have been trying to take action and there are so many different ways that people are silenced because of multiple fears of the outcome. And, and the whole point of QCRC doing this at this time is because we recognize that we hold power. And we, as members of the music industry, as academics, as artists, as representatives of music in our society today, have that capacity today, right now, to do something meaningful. And, and that, that, that change has to be there. Every person who can do anything meaningful should step up and do it, and now. Educational institutions are places that have also upheld these power structures and upheld gendered norms and upheld inequities and injustices as well. So I think there's a really fundamental role that institutions such as conservatoires and universities and other institutions within the arts industry need to, to play in taking a good look at themselves and also thinking about the role of educating all of those who are part of this broader ecosystem.